Hi there. Welcome to MCSI. My name is Rosie. In this video, I will demonstrate how to investigate a malicious dynamic link library or DLL. Let's start with understanding what a dynamic link library is. We have the binary for Microsoft Teams. When you double click this binary, it would start executing. Now think about the code that will be executed, which enables you to make video and audio calls. That code may include functions. Some functions required by Teams may not be present within its binary. For this reason, the required functions would be imported from a file called as Dynamic Link Library or DLL. Once the DLL is imported and the required function is accessible, Teams can proceed with its execution. A DLL file has a number of functions that can be imported by a binary in execution. Cyber adversaries may include functions in a DLL to perform malicious activities like establishing connections with the attacker's server, executing malicious commands, collecting user data and sending it to the attacker's server, etc. When this malicious DLL is imported by a legitimate binary, execution deviates from normal expected behavior. In this video, I will demonstrate how static analysis of a malicious DLL can be performed. Before we dive into static analysis, let me tell you about the internal structure of a DLL. All DLLs follow the portable executable file format that contains a header and various sections. This is also known as the PE file format. Most Windows executables with extensions like exe, DLL, sys, fawn, etc follow the PE file format. There is a special flag in the header, which indicates the type of file being stored. Knowledge of the PE file format would help greatly in static analysis of the DLL. To know more about the portable executable file format, I invite you to read this article in our library. You will find the link to it in the description box below. This is the DLL that we will perform static analysis on. I have opened the DLL in PE Studio. Let us look at some interesting findings. We can see that PE Studio has identified the PE file type as a 32-bit DLL. Here, you can see the compiler stamp associated with this sample. It denotes the time at which the sample was compiled. Some suspicious samples are assigned a timestamp at a future date or a much older date. It is important to note the value present in this field. We can see the various portions associated with the header in this DLL. Once you have a good idea about the internal layout of a PE file, you will be able to easily interpret the information present here. This sample has four sections. Most PE samples have a minimum of two sections, the code and data sections. Code is typically stored in an executable text section. Data can be stored in one section or across multiple sections like this. This section contains initialized global pointers. This section stores resources used by the PE file, like images or manifest information. As you analyze more PE samples, you will get familiar with the different types of sections and what data is expected to be present in them. Only the MS Core DLL is utilized by this DLL sample. These functions in the Imports section have been imported from the MS Core Dynamic Link Library. They exist to be legitimately used by Windows programs. However, cyber adversaries may misuse them. P Studio has already flagged some imports as suspicious. It appears that this DLL performs some operation with the registry. It may utilize a web client and download a file. It may work with zip files. It may set some keys and values within the registry. It also attempts to perform start, delete, and move operations. Next, let's look at the strings section. There is a URL to a hosted zip file. URL House has identified this host as a malicious one. It appears to have been taken down. 
There is the path to a registry key here. This key typically contains the list of programs to be loaded when a user logs into the computer. It is possible that this DLL manipulates this path in the registry. This tactic is an attacker favorite. Malicious programs can be configured to execute whenever a user logs in. We can find the same keywords observed in the imports section. One function present in the DLL sample has been exported. The name appears to be random. It may be obfuscated or is meant to be vague. This concludes the static analysis phase. We have identified that the DLL downloads a zip file from a known malicious server, may manipulate the registry, and exports a function with an unintelligible name. VirusTotal indicates that multiple security vendors have identified this sample as a malicious one. We can confirm more facts about the nature of this DLL when dynamic analysis is performed. Let's talk about dynamic analysis of this DLL. A DLL cannot be executed like an EXE file. It is a file containing a number of functions, waiting to be imported by an executable. Which executable can be used to analyze the behavior of this DLL? Run DLL32.exe is a legitimate Windows executable that can load specified DLLs. To proceed with dynamic analysis of this DLL, first identify the functions present in it. Then utilize run dll32 to import the dll and call a function. Observe how the dll behaves using dynamic malware analysis tools like Process Monitor, Redshot, and Wireshark. Here is a quick overview of what we discussed in this video. We studied how a dll is used by an executable, followed by understanding the internal structure of a dll. Then we performed static analysis of a malicious dll, and understood how dynamic analysis of the same can be performed. Pick a malicious DLL from a malware dataset and statically analyze it in your home lab. I am sure you will have some interesting findings. If you liked this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon!